this week I've got some questions right here from you and I'm gonna answer them. So if you've been watching the show, thank you so much. You probably saw in episode five that I was talking about doing something uh, to review the Cup of Excellence winners for Ethiopia. Now, sadly, I had some beans get stolen in the mail uh, that were for that episode, and so it isn't gonna happen. But fortunately, we're gonna do exactly the same thing with Cup of Nicaragua. That is gonna be our next episode, so stay tuned. Um, today, I've got some questions from you guys about coffee, and I'm just gonna dive right into them. Um, the first question is from Taryn. Taryn says, what's the best coffee to make cold brew from? Okay, so cold brew is when you take coffee and you brew it in cold temperatures rather than hot water, which is usually used, right? So it's a different brewing method. Now, because it's cold water, you actually get very different results. Coffee specifically has a lot of extraction that occurs um, only at a certain temperature. Um, and so when you do it cold, there's all this stuff that just simply won't extract. It tends to be more of those like front end flavors, things that are fruity, um, you know, a little bit of acidity on the front. Um, so my recommendation, if you're gonna look for a cold brew, would be to find something that's got some flavor notes um, that are sort of earthy, like um, cinnamon, uh, chocolate, nutmeg, things like that, um, rather than uh, peach or apple, stay away from those brighter sorts of things because those flavors aren't gonna wind up getting extracted from the coffee. The next question is from Katie and she wants to know, what's the best roast level? Very interesting question. Um, there's definitely an answer I think that most people in the specialty industry would throw at you. They'd be like, medium roast. Um, and I tend to think medium roast is a safe answer, but it certainly is not the complete answer. Um, at the moment, it's very popular to do what's called a Nordic roast, which really sort of goes towards that lighter end of the roast spectrum. And when you do that, you get really great delicate flavors like, you know, flowers and nectarines and um, it, it, they, those are really wonderful. However, in the past few videos, I compared coffee to wine, right? Think of coffee um, like a wine and think about the fact that every bean that comes from a different place on the earth um, has a different chemistry to it and a different flavor uh, that it brings to the table. And then think about roasting. Roasting actually is breaking down compounds within a bean. And when it does that, it releases new flavors. So you might have a bean that grows in Kenya um, where they have very you know, specific mineral content in their soil um, versus a bean that grows in Guatemala um, and they're gonna have very different chemistry. So um, breaking down a bean that's in Kenya, I'm gonna wind up with different amino acids um, that result in different flavors than the Guatemalan one. Now, some of those um, amino acids are gonna show up at different places throughout the roast process. Most of the time when you get to a dark roast, there's nothing left to taste. But there are beans out there um, that have really interesting flavors at darker roasts. And you, are, you know, those are rarer to find, um, but if you find somebody that's really good with dark roasts or specializes in dark roasts, you might really be able to enjoy something that most people are not enjoying because it takes a, a specific kind of bean to do that. So my answer is there's, there's no best. There's no best because this is not 
um, an objective thing. It's not like which car is going to be the best for brakes in the winter. Um, there are nearly infinite possibilities. I mean, when you think about the fact that crops change every year in the kinds of flavors that you can get from coffee and a roaster can really sort of dial in in the same way that a chef does on which of those flavors they want to highlight in the bean. So find a roaster you like and try different things. So that it sort of didn't answer your question, but I, hopefully that gives you enough to answer it yourself. But my recommendation, try a lot of things. Feeds very well into our next question from John who says, how can I get better at tasting the notes used to describe a coffee? I do a lot of cooking and tend to think that the first time, even though I was really scared the first time I sat down at a cupping, I actually think I came with a little bit more palate than a lot of people start with because I'm so used to saying, okay, I taste, um, you know, there's tarragon or there's rosemary in this dish because I cook a lot and I know what I like and how I like to add it. Um, but really, I think it's something that you learn. I, I didn't always have that ability and it's something that I'm getting better at the more coffees that I try. And what I will say is I think the most useful thing you can do is compare coffees. Sit down with more than one coffee at the same time and try to taste the difference. Um, in cupping, you naturally do this. You know, you'll be sitting and trying a bunch of different coffees, um, but you might, you know, be able to somehow brew yourself two different things in the morning. Maybe you've got a French press and a drip machine um, and you can make yourself two different kinds of coffee, sit there, try them, sip them, write down whatever you taste. Maybe this one's sweeter or it's brighter. Um, maybe you're able to sort of taste something that tastes like cinnamon. Um, so I, I encourage you to just compare things. I think your taste buds will get better. And I will tell you, it's something that once you start doing it, you'll start picking stuff out um, and it's pretty exciting. And then there's no going back, you know, uh, because I, I will say it's, it's gonna ruin you. You know, for some coffees, you'll be like, this is, I can't drink this or I have no interest in this or it's boring or it's over roasted or whatever. But you know, if you want to dive down that rabbit hole, that's, that's the way you want to go about it. Multiple coffees at the same time. Um, and then I've got a different John uh, asking me how many farmers are earning enough to make a living off of coffee. Um, John, we are actually going to dive into how coffee is bought and sold a little bit further in some upcoming episodes. But to answer this for you in a nutshell, um, about 3% of the world's coffee right now is specialty grade. And the people that are paying for specialty coffee are giving more to the farmers. Uh, people that are in that commodity market um, are really struggling. Um, it's, it's hard to make a living. Um, People are losing money. I actually, when I was talking with Anna Cafe um, in episode five, I sort of hinted about the fact that even though they have a differential, they are often paying more to produce the coffee um, than they are getting for it on the sea market. And that was one of the things they actually reiterated to me, um, you know, after I came out with that video, they were like, hey, just, you know, if you get a chance, tell people, you know, people are, still in many cases losing money. And that is true. Um, commodity coffee that uh, Folgers or Hills Brothers or whatever, um, in many cases, uh, those prices that are being paid through the sea market are not enough uh, to help you know a regular farmer make a living. Uh, well, uh, that was uh, my Q&A for today. Um, I have a very exciting episode coming up for you in two weeks. Um, that is gonna be where I sit down and try the coffees uh, that placed in the Cup of Nicaragua uh, competition. I have been saving myself. I have never tried a Cup of Excellence winning coffee. Um, I had the opportunity to and I was like, don't do it, don't do it, because I wanna do it for you guys for the first time right here on camera. Um, and I'm gonna be bringing my roommates in. Um, one of them knows nothing about coffee. So it, it's gonna be a really exciting experience to go through all these coffees and share them with you on camera. Really look forward to it. Have a great day and I'll see you next time on City Boy.